Fujitsu is a founding uh, member of the Center for Threat Informed Defense, and I wanted to get your thoughts on why threat informed defense is important to you and, and your customers. Yeah, uh, it is because uh, threat informed defense helps us and our customers prioritize their limited resources. As you can see in the recent uh, solar winds incident, adversaries are becoming more and more sophisticated, persistent, and stealthy. On the other hand, uh, our human and budgetary resources for cybersecurity are unfortunately always limited. Knowing your likely ad adversaries and using threat intelligence, in particular MIDA attack framework, you can uh, determine where to concentrate your defenses to make the most of your limited resources. Fujitsu's participated in a number of center research projects. A couple of them have been focused around adversary emulation. And so I was hoping to get your thoughts on, first of all, what is adversary emulation and why do you think it's important? Yeah, yes, we did participate in both uh, FinSix and ManyPass adversary emulation plan projects. Adversary emulation plans like ones developed in uh, FinSix and ManyPass projects are plans for humans and computers to emulate attacks by, by a particular adversary as they were actually carried out in the real world. Uh, these plans are very helpful to support a threat informed defense, in particular for conducting red or purple team uh, operations. Let me stress this. While emulation plans for humans are important, I believe those for computers will be increasingly important in the long run. It will make uh, a big difference once we can bridge emulations, emulation plans to uh, automated adversary emulation that will allow small and medium-sized organizations that cannot afford red teams to conduct a red team activities. What do you think are the most important priorities, the places where we in the center and, and frankly, the larger community should be focusing over the next 18 months, two years? The first of all, our cloud security. So uh, having seen the recent uh, solar winds and uh, Orion compromise, I would declare that the main battleground has shift, uh, moved into the cloud. I used to think it would eventually shift into the cloud, and, but it is happening so much faster than I expected. So the recent work from home trend and subsequent wider adoption of cloud may have accelerated this shift. One of the projects that the center released uh, recently is a comprehensive mapping of the NIST 853 uh, cybersecurity control framework to the attack matrix. I have seen before that some uh, small organization, uh, some organization doing this on a much, much smaller scale. This uh, NIST uh, SB853 map to attack made public is much more comprehensive and its utility is much larger for the wider community. So my understanding of uh, the relationship between attack and the threat informed defense is that uh, and, uh, the attack is the key element to weave a threat informed defense. And uh, actually we are building and up updating solutions using attack as its baseline. And uh, before attack, we as the cybersecurity community did not have a common language to express adversaries', adversaries uh, post-compromise uh, behavior other than using words. And we are not sure what is told here is the same as what is described there, so, or different. So now with attack, we can be pretty sure that we are talking about the same thing. Yeah, that idea of attack as a common language is really, is really critical. It, to my mind, it's the the foundational use case for attack is communication. But it's also important to note that threat informed defense is broader than just attack. And over the yeah. in the coming years, you're going to start to see more and more from the Center for Threat Informed Defense that is moving beyond just attack. Thanks. Let's do this again sometime, but in Thank a you. restaurant in Tokyo. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Thank you very much.